Welcome back to another episode of the No Flipping Excuses channel. My name is Michael Brad Hauer. Yes, I am very hungry, and I am joined today by my good friend and business partner, Jason Palliser. How are you doing? Good. Happy to be here. I'm uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to go well, but he's got like a smirk on his face, and and it's my hungry smirk. And so we've been we've been taking comments, and he's pulling them. We we decided when we were sitting down to do these videos uh, this round, we were just doing them and I was like, it'll be more fun to do them at random. Cause I think that I'll speak differently than just, uh, having a subject and knowing ahead of time what I'm going to talk about. And so, and in the spirit of being random, yeah. these questions that by the way, subscribe and comment because they are coming from you. Yeah. Whenever you comment below on our videos with a question that we talk about, they somehow miraculously appear somewhere in the vicinity that Jason has to answer the question. Now, before we get started, I, I am going to actually begin eating. And I know everybody's hungry here. I'm hungry for food. You guys are hungry for knowledge. We're all going to get to that point. But we just did want to make sure we did our uh, our intros today and said uh, hello to everybody. And then today's question, Jason, You're comes from me. So Comes from one I of our users. I can't say it. I can't say it on the video. Are you serious? Oh yeah, it's it's written there. See, or uses one. It's it's on there. <laughs> You're quasi disgusting. <laughs> you know, we're all getting fed today. Knowledge oh, so, and hey, before we started, I was like, "What? Why do you have fruit, dude?" And he's like, "Just get prepared." I'm like, "Just be ready. Be ready. We yeah. all gotta. We all gotta feed our knowledge." And today is a really good question. Actually, oh. we've we've. <laughs> We've talked about this a few times. Jason actually has a lot of knowledge in this area. What is the difference and what is better? Uh, an Airbnb versus a long-term rental. Which is better? Okay. So, Airbnb versus traditional rental. Um, out of all the random ones that Mike's hit me with, this this one's fun for me just from the standpoint of um, we do this a lot. So uh, is, is it fun for you because of the pair or because of the question or is it a mixture? No, that's of both? the absurd part. Okay. Like, I was like, why are you bringing a piece of, piece of fruit? Like seriously? Anyways. All right. Back, okay. back to which is better. Yeah. Okay. So let's just talk about that. This one's easy for me. Um, so it's just basically evaluating a deal two different ways. Uh, when we train people, put things in place to get to the good stuff first, there's several things that you could do, right? Let's just list them off. You can wholesale. You can do a traditional rental, which is what we're going to talk about now. Uh, you can do a fix and flip. Okay. You could do some owner finance and you could get a property and owner finance it like a bank to somebody else. You can Airbnb it. You could do a lot of things. You could tear it down and develop it, right? You could take an asset and put, put a uh, tiny home on it. And since it's not on a regular foundation, not have to pay extra taxes. There's a thousand things you could do, but specifically speaking to this um, question that you folks pose to us and keep hitting us with stuff. Cause that's how we develop the next um, training videos that we're going to set, set out for you folks. We're here to help you run your business well, but for this particular question, here's my answer. Um, the difference is simply this regular rentals. That's what you're used to. Find out what, what what rents are in the marketplace for the number of bedroom count that you have. Let's just say in an area, uh, the house can rent for two grand. A three bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square foot house traditionally could rent for two grand. Um, or now you can evaluate the property as an Airbnb, right? So now you can evaluate it as an Airbnb. So what we would do is this. We would take and look at it as an Airbnb and say, okay, it's not about what can I get per month, um, like a re regular 30-day rental period. We would look at, we would use tool, tools like airdna.co. You may want to pause that and write it down, airdna.co. And what that, what that does is for the area that you have a property that you're evaluating in, you can look up what is the average, uh, average days per month that it's rented out and what's the average daily amount uh, that you can charge for a three bedroom, two bath or a two bedroom, one bath. That's what that tool does. Right. And the reason you want to do that is this traditional rental versus an Airbnb. The Airbnb might produce four grand a month or 4,500 a month, but you could rent it for two grand. So what do you think makes more sense to you at that point as a real estate investor? Right. So you make your own decision. So if I'm deciding right now um, via the question, which one's better, 
I like Airbnb. Okay. Now I'll give you the, I'll give you the nuances and difference between each so that you can develop a real understanding. And it's my goal based upon this question to tell, I'm giving you my opinion, but I want you to develop your own opinion. Okay. So what I want to do is talk to you about the differences between the two so that you can make a decision on what path might be a better path for you. And even more importantly, than just choosing one path and just blindly going down it. What I like to do is equip you um, knowledge wise to just look at each asset as it comes to you, make a decision, decide what bucket it falls into. So sometimes one might not be better than the other, but if I had to vote or choose, I would always choose Airbnb. Okay. Now let's go through the differences and then I'll kind of sprinkle in my reasoning. Why? Okay. Traditional rental on this hand. Um, so some things that are like a traditional rental, some things that, uh, that we can kind of pull back the curtain on. Number one, you're signing a lease for a longer period of time. So maybe a six month lease or a 12 month lease. And here's what, here's what I tell people about that. When somebody moves into your property, here's what I know with certainty. You don't know how often they clean. I repeat, I'm just giving you nuances and differences here. You don't know how often they clean. They may move in, put their feet on, uh, feet on their coffee table that they moved in while when they moved in and never clean until the a week before they're supposed to move out and they half-heartedly pick up. So uh, you can't control that, right? And, uh, and that's one thing that, uh, so there's more wear and tear there. Here's another thing that I know. On a traditional rental, when people move in for a year, they're moving there to live there for a year and you're getting some positive income, whatever it may be. Um, from a traditional rental, but they also move in and make it home. Did you hear me? They move in and they make it home, meaning this. If I'm going to live there for a year, I may hang a picture of me and my family on the wall. I may have more stuff that it gets accumulated over that one year's time because I'm living there. I'm living my life while I'm renting a property from you, right? And um, so more wear and tear, there's, there's possibility for more wear and tear over time. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, that is what it is. That's, that's part of having a rental right now. Let me go on the other side. Okay. So what if I treat it as a, uh, Airbnb? Well, now nobody has a one year lease, right? So they're not moving in all their stuff. Okay. Uh, second thing, which you may not be aware of. Okay. Um, the only reason you're going to get somebody in your place typically renting out uh, as an Airbnb is that you've got it on Airbnb. So people can search and find it and you can book or it's on VRBO. So they can search and find your property and, and raise their hand to book. Okay. So one, they're not there long-term. So they're not moving all their stuff in Two, on those websites that I just said, which is the reason that they're going to rent from you is because they could actually find you on those sites. Here's what you may not be aware of over here from the, from the apples slash apple slash oranges, no fruit. Oh, no in, pears? No, we can't do any pears? No pears. No, oh, no, pun, no, no pun intended. But, you know, an apple versus an orange here, what you may not be aware of is that when somebody books from you on one of these booking rental sites, they also give you supplemental insurance. Because um, we get questions all the time like, well, what happens if they put a hole in the wall or they tear something up or blah, blah, blah. Well, typically on any one of these websites, they'll give you anywhere from a half a million to a million. Look it up. So that means each time somebody books, you have uh, property damage, liability and stuff, uh, blanket coverage from these places because they want you to keep your property on there because they, they get a percentage of that booking fee, right? So they give you supplemental coverage. So therefore, uh, therefore, if something happens, it gets fixed which I like over here. You can fight back and forth with a renter and, and decide who's going to pay for what this, that, and the other thing over here. They've, they were smart enough to make it easier, um, easier in that, in that respect. And it's happened to us twice. And it was, somebody put a hole in the wall and then somebody broke a coffee pot and the thing that it sat on to tipped over and broke. Uh, we took a picture, they said, get it fixed. And we sent in the invoice and it, it was it was done just like that. And I know real time after each stay when my cleaner comes in, what the property looks like. And over here, let's say it rents out 70% of the month. If somebody's renting for a full year, it's rented out 365 days in a row. Over here, it might only be rented out 20, 20 days out of 30 days. 
but I could still double what I could make over here on the, on the regular rental side. And I have an extra 10 days. Uh, that may, I'll start buying properties in places I want to visit in the open dates. I don't have to pay. I don't have to pay to go to that city and pay for an Airbnb or, or pay for, um, pay for a hotel stay or whatever. So now all of a sudden I'm, I'm winning on multiple levels. So, uh, what I always tell people is, um, you can decide yourself what, which one you think is better than another. But I always tell everybody, if you're equipped in knowing the pros and cons, can't you make an informed decision every time you look at an asset now? So again, I like taking these questions randomly so that I can just tell you purely through, just off the top of my head, what things pop into my head the most. I, I like doing some of this stuff, you know, like without having a topic in mind and thinking about it first, because that, that lets you know what, what files to the front of my thought pattern or thought process right out of the gate. So that's what I would tell you. I like Airbnb a little bit more. Um, one, because I can make a lot more revenue potentially. And then two, uh, I, I uh, experience over time because I've done both for a long amount of time yeah. and the, the, the renter side of things. Okay. So the renter side of things, Mike, um, usually ends up with more wear and tear. Yeah. I'm not I'm not mad about it. It's just part it's just part of the process of being a um a property owner. But uh if if I had a if I had to choose one or the other, I'd always I'd always choose the the vacation rental side. Right. And I wanted to look at it before we wrap up I'm from the other side of things too as a uh, Airbnb versus long term rental because it's it's hard to answer whether one is better than the other because there are places where you're probably not going to have an Airbnb. It will be a long-term rental because there really isn't a market for Airbnb. That's just going to kind of depend. But then on the flip side of things from somebody who is either a seller looking to sell properties, you're going to be looking at the Airbnb buyer because why? He's willing to pay a little bit more money because he can because his model of what he's going to do with the property is a little bit different. Yeah, what do you hear? I'm going to flush that out. What Mike's just simply saying is that if, if you're living on the side of the fence in the investment sandbox where you're just wholesaling property to other people, um, you could talk to a landlord about buying your house, right? And you could talk to an Airbnb buyer about buying a house off you or buying a contract off you, wholesaling it. You're always going to make more money. Um, so, Mike, as you said, um, you're always going to make more money if it's uh, selling to an Airbnb buyer because they can pay more because they're going to get more revenue. Sure. And they look at the asset as making more revenue. Sure. So biggest difference between, uh, you know, which one is better is, is a hard question to answer. But Jason, I had to hit you with it. Right, Actually, I didn't have to hit you with it. My pair. The question came out of the pair. Had to hit you with it out of the blue and figure out what how you really felt about the difference. Which is better, Airbnb, long-term rentals? Yeah. Short answer, they both have their pros and cons, but Airbnb is going to be what you prefer over anything else. Yeah. And, um, and again, if you've watched some of the other videos... Uh, we started, we started taking your comments and questions at random and, or he's hitting me at random with him and he's running out of ways to uniquely tell me what the I'm next I'm running question. out of I was just cutting into my lunch no, and there is, was the question that I had to answer No, for you, you sat down. He sat down before this video started with the smirk and I'm, I asked, I'm like, oh, what's the Well, fruit? I knew the, the what's pear, the fruit the for? pear had a funny face on it. So I knew something was up with the pear. And by so the way, I, behind the scenes, you saw him cut it. He he did make one one or two little pre cuts ahead of time. That's why I was like, "What no, are you I doing?" No, I didn't. There's magic there that you're not seeing that he's not seeing. That the reason that you need to comment and subscribe because who knows where your question is going to pop out of next. Kind of nervous <laughs> to surprise him. So thanks again for watching. Write down your comments. Put them in the uh, in the in the posts, and we will see you on the next video. See you, folks.